many people the beautiful image of England in the summer is things like English cricket, you know, the Henley Regatta. There are things out there, Troop in the Colour, that basically just say you're in England. As we pointed out with a recent video recently, the red telephone boxes, they just signify, don't they, the United Kingdom, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, you know. It's just simply marvellous, you know, when you look around and think, yes, these are English things. It's a little bit like this. Yes, Wimbledon, every year, strawberries and cream, champagne, if you can afford it. And then, of course, seeing all those tennis superstars take to centre court. But next year, there's going to be a radical change. And they're claiming this isn't to do with any pressure from the outside world. But as ever, let me explain. Hi, good morning. Neil Sean here in the very heart of London. And yeah, this really does focus upon the fact that, I don't know about you, I get really annoyed when they change things. Things that have been tradition, you know, for many, many years. When you think about Wimbledon, the All England Tennis Club, it's been around over 100 years now, and it started off with such great values. We've seen the odd, you know, sort of drama, haven't we? Particularly in the likes of, um, you know, John McEnroe. Do you remember that one? Chalk dust way back in the 80s. Bit of a bad boy of tennis. Not too bad, though, of course, because he wanted to come back and hopefully uh, keep part of the team. Now it seems that Wimbledon have got a bigger problem because next year they've decided for the very first time in their history that the female contestants, participants, whatever you want to call them, superstars, do not have to adhere to the all-white ensemble. That's right, their underwear could be of any particular colour. Now this really is apparently to do with their personal uh, side of things. We'll just leave it there. I think most people understand what that is. But then again, you see, when you dig a little bit deeper, you see beyond that. It's because really, you know, whichever way Wimbledon want to spin it, it's not about that. It really is about the fact that they find it increasingly difficult to lure these particular superstars of tennis over to their tournament. This is because they have their own individual deals. You know, these deals with these major companies that are embossed with all the logos that matter to them. Now, of course, when you come over to England, you're not allowed to show these uh, massive embossed logos. You're just simply not allowed, although it's crept in over the last few years. It's very strange because the television rights to Wimbledon are owned by BBC Television, which is not supposed to advertise. Yet when you watch Wimbledon, there's massive ads everywhere across the screen. So moving forward next year, it looks like the first sort of, shall we say, loosening of the rules but will this tarnish the image? And more importantly, do people really want to be looking at logos? How influential are they now in the 21st century? Do people really think, wow, she's got that tracksuit on, I must buy it. I don't really see it. You know, I think people today are far more savvy. My generation, your generation, we might have been more inclined. So once again, because of the wokerateri, as they call it, the cancel culture, even Wimbledon now are succumbing to the fact that either they play ball or there's simply no game set on match. As ever, I'd love to know what you think to this particular story in the comments below. Are they wrong to go down this route? Should they have simply held out and stuck to traditions? Or as ever, is it simply always about the one with the biggest cash? Neil Sean in the very heart of London.